Hello guys, what is going on? Zach here, and I'm bringing you round two of the Grand Masters League, set one between Chris and Tim. Chris playing in green down here, and uh, this game is already out there, it's already been released uh, early, because this game was actually played on um, rated by mistake, Tim decided to leave the ratings on and neither of them noticed, so the first game automatically got published and some of you may have seen this already. The second game however, which will be coming up after this, has not been released just yet, so you've still got that one to look forward to, uh, but yeah, it was an honest mistake from both these guys, and uh, I got an apology from Chris saying, oh, I'm sorry uh, we left the ratings on. Uh, but it's no big deal, it's only one game, and at the end of the day, it's kind of left a little bit more tension out there to see who is going to win the second game. But if you haven't seen this one already, I'm going to be bringing it to you right now, and uh, we're going to get set with the GML for the rest of the week. Chris then playing down in green to the south of the map as Vikings, his opponent today, Tim playing up to the north in Vikings as well. So we have got a Viking war, and the map is continental. This is the choice uh, from Chris here. Chris deciding to play on Continental. The next map will be Tim's choice, and we'll see how that one goes for him. But right now, we're going to be focusing on this one here and seeing how this one goes down for both of these guys. Chris off to a little bit of a rocky start after losing 2-0 to Dogao in the first round. Tim, again, not off to the best of starts. Uh, he did lose two games as well. So both these guys in the, in a sense, loser's bracket, although there is no bracket to this tournament so we'll really get to see who is going to be winning this game a little bit later on and uh, it's going to be an interesting one at that. Chris then deciding to choose Continental and this is quite an interesting map it's a map that we don't see all that often but one of my favorites actually I do love Continental and this one is quite interesting one thing about Continental is that there is always water around the outside which does mean that rushing is a possibility and most likely thing to happen as well as the fact that we have got big fish back here so we will see fishing ships coming out as well uh, to work on their ecos down at the south and down at the north up at the north even I imagine now the thing is with this one is that there is big rivers going through the center of the map and that is something that's not always that common and usually it is possible to do a land attack as well as a water attack on this map but if we have a look there are actually only two small choke points separating them on the land because these two big rivers do actually separate them uh, rather nicely which does mean that it's quite an interesting one and given Tim and Chris's style of walling, it's likely that we'll see walls going up to kind of uh, stop themselves from getting in there, uh, uh, stop their opponent from getting in, and uh, yeah, that could be quite interesting indeed, as we'll probably see a lot more on the water than we will on the land. Sometimes when we see Continental, we'll see a walling attempt, but sometimes you can see a Castle Age break through those walls, and uh, that is quite big if that does happen, though today it could be a different story altogether, as we do have quite an interesting map to say the least. Tim now going to go and lure his first boar up at the top. Chris already luring his second one, uh, first one in right now, and uh, that is pretty good for him. He is going to be getting underway quite nicely. That's Doc just going up right there as well, and uh, he will be getting out some fishing ships before he goes up to the feudal age, no doubt. Up at the top here, though, I've just noticed Tim is not looking so good. Chris blocking that villager in with his scout cavalry, and that villager getting extremely low on HP. It looks like Chris could actually prevent that villager from luring properly. Very nicely done from him, preventing that villager. A little bit of laming, and that happened just before five minutes. So so Tim could have restarted if he wanted to, but he decided not to, and he's continuing to play on. And after losing that villager there, that has really put him back quite a bit at the start of this game. Excellent uh, work with his scout cavalry there from Chris, causing that villager to end up being killed off by the boar. And uh, that is going to give Chris a nice little advantage going into the feudal age. And uh, of course, that is going to help him out getting with those getting those galleys out earlier on, which is so important in these kind of maps, where if you can take out those fishing ships from your opponent before they even get up to the feudal age you've given yourself a huge advantage and then going on into castle you can push your advantage from there and end up taking the game of course one villager lost at the start of the game isn't the end of it for Tim at all he is uh, an excellent player and I'm sure he is going to be able to come back from that loss either way 
but we've got to bear in mind one little villager lost can have a massive impact overall and if we can see from the scores already Chris starting to take a little bit of a lead as he is now luring his second boar in and once this one has been uh, eaten up he will be able to advance up to the feudal age in a reasonable time whereas Tim on the other hand he is going to be luring his second boar in just now it's going to be significantly slower than Chris and it is going to mean that Chris is going to get up to the feudal age first no doubt interestingly enough though Tim's actually put his dot on the front and this is something as well that Tim needs to be a little bit wary of. He's put his dock here, which is kind of an odd situation or an odd place to put it in. You'd think perhaps he'd go for it at the back so he can go and collect up these big fish. But now he's actually got it on this little river at the front and he's actually taking in the shore fish, which is really not a good idea because they do collect so slowly. Look how slowly those fishing ships are collecting fish from this source. He's going to be much better if you move them over to the right and took these big fish. Uh, great fish here um, and took the big fish even though they've got to travel a little bit further the increased gathering rate would really make that worthwhile Tim not off to the best of starts considering the fact Chris now going to be gathering the big fish down at the south and he is going to be gaining a massive food boost in comparison to Tim as he's just about to finish up this boar and I think once this boar is finished he'll be able to advance up to the feudal age on 26 maybe 27 population I think he'll probably go for 26 here as he will just reach 500 food in a second as these villagers drop off their food at the town center there we go 500 food very easily done up to the feudal age he goes and that is a reasonable time 8 minutes and 15 seconds whereas Tim going to be struggling now as he's still dark age and he's not got enough food to get himself up to the feudal age in a reasonable time he is going to have to be very careful not to lose these fishing ships once uh, Chris does reach feudal and gets those all important galleys out. He is now uh, just finishing off his boar up at the north and he should just be able to reach 500. There we go, 26 pop for him at 8 minutes 50. So Chris got a good 40 seconds lead now and uh, see what he can actually do with that. Moving all of his villagers to wood to go for a big galley rush. Moving another villager over to the shoreline to make a dock down here and of course he has still got these fishing ships gathering the big fish whereas Tim is stuck on these little, little tiddlers down here not really so good for him less fishing ships out as well and uh, Tim now definitely going to be having to play from behind he has got a few sheep left over though and he should be able to um do something with this, but this is kind of interesting. Tim sending over five villagers forward now, and Chris has already walled off his little choke point. We'll see what these villagers can do, but it looks like Tim's actually going to go for a forward, in which case that is going to be an interesting play indeed, because if Tim baits Chris into going heavy grush, and then Tim doesn't go for a huge grush himself, well, Chris could just go the wrong way about doing things, although he will have the opportunity later in the game to go and land, Tim may just be able to. Uh, just be able to uh, get this uh, forward up and really pressure Chris. Chris might be going for the wrong kind of build here and uh, Tim might already know that he's not going to have a chance on the water so he might not even invest in any galleys whatsoever. There we go, Chris up to the feudal age right now. He is going to start pumping out some galleys from these stocks in just a moment. He needs a little bit more gold and wood to do so investing very heavily in these galleys and he is no doubt going to take the water control at this rate but Cr Tim coming forwards with this barracks here looks like he might just be able to break through these palisades real quick or or get through here in a reasonable time and that is going to be really interesting to see how that one goes for him going to be very risky but it could just pay off starting to research double bitax now and if we have a look he really has no villagers gathering gold whatsoever Chris kind of scouting around trying to work out what Tim is doing and he, as you can see well if he comes over here he'll be able to see he's not actually taking any gold which is an interesting one because Chris is going to sink well sink he's going to think even well why is he not taking much gold if I was Chris uh, if I was Tim even I'd be taking some gold right now to get on with my grush as we can see Tim with only one dock it's going to be different altogether for him in comes the villagers down here trying to break through real quick on the walls but Chris coming forwards with some villagers to build a stone wall up right here and I think that Chris is probably going to end up actually walling this off before Tim can do any damage whatsoever though at the same time Tim could easily put a dock on here and send a transport ship over around these walls Chris may have the water control at this stage or you may gain the water control very quickly but he's got a long way to get around in order to uh, stop a dock from going up here and a transport ship from going around forcing Chris though to build a barracks and effectively Tim's 
forward, kind of a little bit of a fail here. Chris managing to wall up quickly and in time before uh, Tim could actually break through there and do any real damage. I'm just waiting to see that dock. I mean, Tim could easily get a dock here, build a transport ship and ship some archers across and that would be a huge play from him. Though I can't imagine we're going to see that at the moment because uh, Chris, well, he's moved his villagers away and uh, he could do that because Chris has gone the wrong way around indeed he's found his fishing ships over here and they are no doubt gonna go down but Tim could just go for a dock on the shoreline here he's got enough resources to do it and there's the transport ship I was wondering where it was gonna be the transport ship coming over now and Tim gonna go and land on Chris's side he's looks like he's gonna go and land on here and this could be really really bad for Chris Chris I Thinks he knows just about what's going to happen. He's already getting a watchtower up on this gold mine here to be on the safe side. And I think for now he's going to be okay. He may have just spotted those villagers coming in. And uh, I think he did. Oh no, he may have done. Yeah, he's got to have seen that. He's going to go see that now. He's going to go try and take out these villagers from Tim. Tim going to try and do a best forward that he can. And no doubt he's going to be shipping some more villagers. Uh, not more villagers, more uh, archers across in a transport ship. But it looks like Tim's going to get this archery range up. And Chris is going to have quite a big problem on his hands because he doesn't have an archery range, he doesn't have a stable, all he's got is three docks at the back and that is going to be a real problem. Of course now though Tim likely to lose his transport ship and it's almost all or nothing for Tim here. He's going to have to keep these uh, villagers alive. Not looking so great though and uh, this could be a real problem for him as he's going to try and do something with these. Perhaps throw up a tower or something. If he can get a tower up and uh, wedge his villagers in then that could work out very nicely. Chris throwing down two archery ranges and Tim is going to have to do something big here otherwise he is going to be in a real tough spot as Chris has got the water control. He's starting to pump out more fishing ships down at the south and that is of course going to allow him to get that extra food income going and of course he's throwing up these two archery ranges as well which is going to be more than enough to deal with one archery range from Tim here. Tim not looking in the best of shapes at all and uh, this could be a real tough game for him. It looks to me like Chris even trying to make a second wall off with houses over here as Tim brings out his archers now. Going to try and see what damage he can do to these villagers but without fletching he is really going to have a tough time doing a lot of damage. Bear in mind we've got galleys on the shore here, we've got a watchtower up on the gold and if Tim loses these villagers then he is going to have no way at all of actually uh, staying and uh, on Chris's side. Good job Chris actually saw those villagers coming in. He noticed that with just one villager passing past this wall and if Tim was a little bit more careful and did the landing over here perhaps he could have had two or three archery ranges up uh, fairly easily without Chris noticing. He played it a little bit risky decided to put the archery range up here and I think it's going to have cost him. He's losing these villagers now and if he does lose these two villagers then I think it's probably going to be uh, GG for him because there's no way he's going to come back from this after losing so much if we have a look at the scores, Chris getting way into the lead now with 600 score lead. Not to mention the fact he's got all of these galleys, he's taking the water control and Tim now just starting to add on some galley, uh, some docks over here and he knows that he can't afford to lose the water because uh, that could be uh, a very easy landing for Chris and an easy landing for Chris means an easy game for Chris because he will be able to land a few archers over on Tim's side and Tim is going to have absolutely nothing he's going to be able to do about it. He's still got this archery range up here. He's not creating any archers from there at the moment though and he knows he's going to have to get some water control back if he wants to go and land more villagers over. Starting to build docks over on this side but Chris has seen them straight away. He's got his galleys there, he knows the docks are there and he will be able to deal with that accordingly. It looks like Tim is going to try and create enough galleys and he's going to have quite a few out on the water very shortly. Chris is going to have to regain his production of galleys but uh, it's not out of the question that Tim is still in this game though it is going to be extremely hard for him to come back from such a big loss early on. Chris now is starting to seed a few more farms. He's got a lot of docks up and a lot of fishing ships as well. He could be up to the castle age in a very reasonable time here considering this attack from Tim and I think he'll be able to go castle reasonably soon and then obviously war galley is going to be coming out and Tim is going to have absolutely nothing he can do. Another dock coming up on the side here and uh, Chris being chased down by wolves. Fortunately he's got his galleys there and and he can deal with those very quickly and easily indeed. That could have been a completely different story if he didn't have those galleys. But now we've got a 
bit of a tough scuffle on the water. Tim going to move out with his galleys here, and he's got the numbers he needs to break Chris down on this side. Where's the rest of Chris's galleys? Well, I'm not actually too sure, but uh, he does have a few archers here to deal with the archery range and take that down from Tim, just in case Tim is deciding to make more units. And... Uh, Chris, going to wait for that, those guys to go past. Tim noticing that villager there. I think Chris was playing that a little bit cheekily, waiting for those to go by before he could meet, make his dock. But losing that villager, a little bit messy from him. And he's going to have to make a few more galleys down here to keep his fishing ships safe. Looks like he'll be able to have enough. That's four plus, uh, plus three versus Tim's five. So he should have plenty out on the water and able to deal with Chris, uh, Tim even. Tim, on the other hand, he's still going to be feudal for quite some time now, and he's got a few uh, units out as well, and some walls as well, just to just in case Chris does decide to go and land him. Skirmish is a pretty good defensive unit, especially now he knows that Chris is going to be making some archers, and he's population blocked on 48. Chris, on the other hand, is going to be a little bit further ahead, I think, on 60 right now, and he's going to be going in, uh, to the Castle Age in just a second, another 10 food, and we should see Castle from him straight away. There we go, and I think this game is almost sealed now for Chris because if we have a look he's going up to Castle Age in a reasonable time bear in mind Tim's going to be feudal for a long while now and once he does get Castle those war galleys are going to be able to come out he's going to regain the water control and if he wants to he can land Tim with little or no problem whatsoever Tim's starting to stonewall this up now as well and he's getting a bit cautious he knows that Chris could quite easily push out an attack on the land he'd have a little bit of a warning about it but uh, he's going to stonewall up anyway just to be on the safe side. I think now Tim going to be chased down by Chris and Chris should be able to take the water control with little or no problems whatsoever. He's got plenty of fishing ships out on the water here and he's gaining a massive food boost from that. He's going to have to go find some more big fish though and he could deal with a dock over here still. He's moving these villagers out to gather gold so he's going to go over onto this peninsula here and if you can get a dock here he's going to be able to attack Tim's position a bit faster and of course he's going to be able to take the big fish down here as well which is what he's aiming to do he can't have his fishing ships gathering from the small shore fish all day long otherwise they're going to be uh, really not that useful or not effective as they could be so he's going to want to move his docks along a little bit as well but he's waiting to get up to the castle age now so he can upgrade to war galley and then he can engage Tim it looks like Tim's got the number advantage on the water here actually uh, with 16 warships for Chris and 13 for Tim actually I take that back Chris does have an advantage here and nicely done baiting them around with this archer and it looks to me like Chris gonna be able to get a few shots off quite nicely onto Tim's galleys here they're both equal on upgrades but this second dock or fourth dock even for Chris going up right here and he's gonna be able to reinforce pretty quickly indeed Tim though gonna be able to take out a lot of galleys from uh, Chris Chris not anticipating that many galleys on the water he's gonna reinforce that very quickly indeed and I imagine he's going to be making galleys from uh, all of these docks very shortly but right now up to the castle age he's going to hit and as long as he holds this little uh, narrow patch of water for the time being he'll be able to keep his fishing ships safe and that is the main focus for him right now castle age for him and if we have a look at his docks we'll see very shortly war galley coming up bodkin arrow coming up straight away as well and he should be able to clear up this uh, these galleys from Tim very shortly just waiting for war galley to complete before he engages he can't afford to uh, engage any sooner really otherwise he could lose more ships than is really necessary it looks like uh, oh a, a massive attack of wolves here out of nowhere deciding to run across the map and wreak havoc no idea where those wolves actually came from but uh, <laughs> Chris's village is being savaged by wolves over this side and uh, I was not expecting that at all but Tim losing his archery range that attack has completely failed indeed and now we've got a water attack going on down here war galleys straight away Tim is pinned and Tim is not going to be able to get out of there safely at all even though he doesn't have uh, bod uh, ballistics or anything that is GG for Tim's Navy and I think right now Tim is going to be very very hard pressed to come back from this populations wise well <laughs> Tim's on uh, sorry Chris is on 67 Tim is on 51 he is really falling behind and Chris with that huge 1100 score lead is really going to push this to his advantage right now he knows he's got a massive advantage going into this and he knows that he should be able to push this uh, advantage very easily he could go and take out these stocks from Tim fairly easily see where he actually goes with this he's going to go around this 
side. Tim actually going up to the castle age right now, and uh, Chris is going to want to take out these docks as quickly as he can, I think, in order to stop Tim from making uh, too many making too many galleys once he does reach the castle age. Nice, interesting here. Transport ship on the land, and I'm not seeing any units from Chris just yet. I don't know if he forgot to board that thing or what. He's going to move these crossbowmen over, and this could be real problems for Tim. He's got a couple of skirmishes here, but that's three skirmishes against uh, Chris's four crossbowmen, which do have extra upgrades. If he micros these well, then Chris could actually take out the skirmishes and do a lot of damage to Tim's eco here. A couple of really damaged villagers. This villager on one HP, and Chris going to land these crossbowmen over here and do quite a lot of damage, I imagine. Only four crossbowmen, but he could do a lot with that, and if he does continue to make them, well, it could be a real nightmare for Tim to deal with. As we can see, the uh, the skirmish is starting to engage, but he might lure him back to the shore and attack the skirmishes with the war galleys. That is going to work quite nicely for him. Tim reaching the castle age just now, and there's the war galleys coming in. He is going to be able to take out those skirmishes pretty quickly with the war galleys. Nice micro as well. And there we go. Three crossbowmen for Chris. Forcing Tim away from gold. And he could pick off a few villagers here with no problems whatsoever. And every villager lost is a real blow to Tim. Tim just getting down and out right now. As these villagers really starting to do a, uh, these crossbowmen even starting to do quite a bit of damage with their extra range and attack. Tim throwing down a siege workshop, looking to get a mangonel out to deal with the crossbowmen as quickly as he can. Another town centre as well to keep his villagers safe, and uh, he's still in this game. But Chris starting to really start to accelerate away. Looking at the scores, he's gaining more and more of a score lead as the seconds tick by. And I really do think that Tim has got this game. Sorry. Uh, Chris has got this game in the bag. A lot of pressure coming into Tim right now, and Tim doesn't have any navy whatsoever, really. He's lost his docks around at the back, and uh, Chris can easily go and land more units in. In fact, he's going to do that right now. What is he going to go and land, though? That's the question. Uh, he's going to go and land another couple of crossbowmen, keep the crossbowmen coming in, and uh, do what damage he can to Tim. Tim now, though, with a mangonel, I think. Oh, no, it's not. It's a scorpion. Fairly interesting choice, uh, going for a scorpion there. Scorpion's pretty decent. They can do quite a lot of damage um, if units are all in a line, uh, forcing Chris away at any rate, and Tim rebuilding his docks around at the back. So uh, he's going to still try and stay in this. He's got quite a bit of wood and quite a bit of gold as well, so he's still looking to try and beat Chris on the water. But it looks to me like Chris has got way too many warships at the moment, and uh, that is going to be a real problem for Tim to have to deal with. But I've got to say, Tim still in the game at any rate. He is going to be uh, holding on in, I'm sure. But in comes the Navy from Chris right now. Now. and Tim it looks like he's going to lose all of his boats right here it's definitely not looking too promising for him on the water on this side 70 population for Tim and Chris is on 111 right now really starting to accelerate away I think he's got three town centers back at his base or or two actually only oh he has got three and uh, he's working quite heavily on his economy as he is going to come in with these war galleys as well attacking these uh, ships from Tim Tim going to lose his entire navy and that's almost a 2,000 score lead right now Chris going to take this game, I'm sure of it. Uh, I can't see what Tim is going to be able to do to come back from this. Uh, he's got crossbowmen in his base, which he's got to deal with. He's got attacks coming in from the shoreline, which he's got to deal with. And uh, there really isn't a lot that he's got to be able to stop that. There we go, GG from uh, Chris, uh, sorry, Tim even. Chris taking the game, and it's actually 1-0 right now to Chris, which does mean that the next game is all to play for. Tim looking to get a revenge win, making it a tie, or... Chris looking to uh, win the game again and take it 2-0. Stay tuned because I'll be bringing you that right away. Hopefully you've enjoyed this one at any rate. Um, quite an interesting game at the least. I do love Continental. The next map will be Tim's home map, so stay tuned. It'll be on the way right now.